Hello, Adam. Welcome to the edge. It is not the end of the world, but you can see it from here. Eliza? What are you doing here? It is my job to monitor and report on the news, Adam. Before Darrow smothered everything with his signal, the whole world was tuned into this place, including me. The broadcast. I have to stop it. I know. Please, come closer. Do you know where we are, Adam? We are at the fulcrum point, when society lies in the balance. Hugh Darrow hoped to tip the scales one way, by telling the world everything you already know. About the biochip, the Illuminati, everything. He believed knowing the truth would convince mankind to abandon research into human enhancement technologies forever. It would certainly give them reason to fear it. Indeed. Daryl's confession is ready to send. If you want, I can wideband it across all media as soon as you shut down the signal. Everything you worked so hard to uncover will be exposed. But only if you deactivate the broadcast using this control. However, if you desire I can alter Darrow's message. Conceal the creation of the biochip while putting in new content. Content blaming the humanity front. Like Sarah suggested. The organization has already admitted to harboring terrorists. It would be easy to convince people they turn to biological warfare in a more desperate attempt to get rid of augmented people. But why? What would that achieve? In time, it could shift the focus of hatred onto people whose prejudices are seen as too extreme, leaving corporations free to experiment with human evolution as they desire. But if you want me to perform this edit for you, you must disengage the signal and activate the video edit function from here. Alternatively, Darrow's message can be adjusted to erase all mention of the power group known as the Illuminati. I can report that lack of proper regulation allowed vast quantities of neuropazine to become contaminated prior to reaching the market. Taggart's preference. You think the world will buy a made-up story about neuropazine poisoning? You might be surprised by what people believe. I can convince them. And having experienced the negative effects of corporate negligence firsthand, a majority of people might force the world to place harsh restrictions on all human enhancement research. But only if you disengage the signal and activate the video edit function from here. Of course, there is another option. This passage leads to Panchea's pressure regulation controls. Destroy them and the installation will cave in on itself, overwhelmed by the weight of the ocean pressing against it. Everyone inside the structure will die. That's a solution? No one will be left to tell the world what happened, Adam. Nobody will be able to spin the story. Including me. The choice is yours. Do you believe you have the wisdom to choose an appropriate future for mankind? Or do you trust mankind to find the answers on its own? If you do this, First-hand experience with corporate negligence on such a grand scale may convince mankind to enact harsh restrictions on human enhancement research. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Freedom. To those who don't have it, it's more valuable than gold. But where should it start and end? We humans often think we have the right to expand, absorb, convert, or possess anything we need to reach our dreams. But time and time again, hasn't this led to conflicts with others who essentially believe the same thing? Looking back on the challenges I faced, at the way I often resolve them, I realize morality can become our saving grace. 
Most of the time, didn't I try to keep my values in mind, knowing how my actions would affect others? More often than not, I resisted the urge to abuse power and resources simply to reach my goals more swiftly. I managed to hang on to my humanity. But the temptation to ignore it was always there. It's that temptation that so worries Taggart. He's not afraid of freedom. He's afraid of the chaos that erupts when individuals have nothing but morality to constrain them. He wants us to regulate enhancement technologies because he fears all that power without limits, without guardrails to keep us from abusing it. Absolute freedom is no better than chaos. Society needs laws and regulations to protect it. So if the men and women behind Taggart need to work in the shadows, pulling strings to enable us to head in a safe direction, will supporting them be all that bad? If they're as wise as Taggart says, how bad will their leadership be? I just hope they stand by what they say. If you do this, the unadulterated truth in Darrow's confession may well convince mankind to cast all science and technology aside, to ensure that future generations grow up free and whole. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Albert Einstein said, Technological progress is like an axe in the hands of a pathological criminal. It took me a while, but I finally see his point. How often have we chased the dream of progress only to see it perverted? More often than not, haven't the machines we built to improve life shattered the lives of millions? And now we want to turn that dream on ourselves to fundamentally improve who we are. Experience has shown me how dangerous that can be. How many times in the call of duty did I almost fall into the trap of taking shortcuts, abusing my abilities or the resources at hand? I resisted, barely at times, because I valued human lives and considerations. Can I truly despise others who fall? Technology offers us strength. Strength enables dominance, and dominance paves the way for abuse. Darrow understood this. He knew that using technology to become something more than we are risks losing our ability to love, aspire, or make moral choices. The very things that make us human. It also risks giving some men the power to make others what they choose, regardless of the cost to human dignity. The suffering Darrow inflicted is not the end of the world. It is merely the seed for change. And change never comes without pain. If you do this, the focus of hatred may shift to those responsible for unleashing biological warfare, leaving corporations free to experiment with human evolution. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Saraf was right about one thing. It's in our nature to want to rise above our limits. Think about it. We were cold, so we harnessed fire. We were weak, so we invented tools. 
Every time we met an obstacle, we used creativity and ingenuity to overcome it. The cycle is inevitable, but will the outcome always be good? I guess that will depend on how we approach it. These past few months, I was challenged many times. But more often than not, didn't I try to keep morality in mind, knowing that my actions didn't have to harm others? Time and time again, didn't I resist the urge to abuse power and resources simply to achieve my goals more swiftly? In the past, we've had to compensate for weaknesses, finding quick solutions that only benefit a few. But what if we never need to feel weak or morally conflicted again? What if the path Saraf wants us to take enables us to hold on to higher values with more stability? One thing is obvious. For the first time in history, we have a chance to steal fire from the gods. To turn away from it now, to stop pursuing a future in which technology and biology combine, leading to the promise of a singularity, would mean to deny the very essence of who we are. No doubt the road to get there won't be bumpy, hurting some people along the way. But won't achieving the dream be worth it? We can become the gods we've always been striving to be. We might as well get good at it. If you do this, the world will be left with questions, and may never reach a consensus. Are you sure this is your choice? We have little time left, Adam. And might I say, it has been a pleasure. <laughs> Do I trust mankind to save itself? That's what Eliza was asking. The truth is, I don't know. After everything I've seen, all the fighting and the chaos around me, I only know what I want to believe. Somehow, human decency will triumph. These past few months, I've faced many life-threatening situations. I could have given up many times, but my need to know the truth, to uncover the secrets that others were hiding, and to survive, forced me to keep on going. Most of the time, I tried to keep my values in mind, knowing my actions did not have to harm others. I held on to my humanity resisting the urge to abuse power or resources in order to meet my goals. And in the end, I got the job done. But does this mean I have the right to choose for everyone? No. Because it isn't up to me. It isn't up to Darrow, Sarah, or Taggart either. Ordinary men and women will have to decide together what course mankind should take. The kind of people who time and time again have picked and chosen the future in highly practical ways. Slowing change when it's negative, speeding it up when it's good. Can they do it again? I don't know. But I do know I'm not about to let anyone in this station, myself included, stand in their way.
You worry too much, Morgan. There's nothing we can't manage given time. She's here. I have to cut this short. Keep going through the wreckage. Maybe we'll find something we can use for the Morpheus Initiative. Come in. Dr. Reed, we're so pleased you decided to join us. Where else could I go? No regrets, my dear. As Ariadne told Theseus before he entered the Minotaur's labyrinth, always forward, never left or right. You'll be very interested in our current project. We're breaking new ground. Yes, the nanite virus chimera is quite intriguing. I'm looking forward to seeing the hybrid project up close, Mr. Page. And so you shall. But please, call me Bob. <laughs>